What do you think is the biggest value value add or growth that generative finance has for finance and data professionals? Well, I think you have to look at the workflow. And one of the things that finance really excels at is these across the business, long chain workflows. Mm -hmm. And that's something data can provide insights into that nothing else really can. Generative AI sort of tacks onto that and gives you an accessibility layer. And that's the right way to think about generative AI is it's the access interface and orchestration layer for deeper functionality. So it's not enough to just sort of throw generative AI at a problem. There has to be something underneath it, whether that's, uh, you know, the business's mm -hmm. knowledge graph, whether that's applications that you're orchestrating across maybe one platform or multiple platforms. It, it also could be looking downfield and understanding today's picture, but also having predictive, prescriptive, and diagnostic mm -hmm. models that help you find opportunities, resolve issues, and then measure impacts because that's the uh, really the big thing for uh, everything in the business really not just finance it's right. measuring outcomes measuring impacts does this do anything so generative ai is one piece of that puzzle nice nice kate what are your thoughts yeah i'd say the biggest value add if if i put on my sort of regulatory compliance experience that i had before i got way into data analytics and stuff um, there was a document that came out and I want to, I actually want the audience to take a guess as to how many pages this document was. Don't Google it. Don't ask chat GPT. It's called the dot Frank act. And it was a, it was a lengthy document. It was in response to the 2008 financial crisis where basically everything went wrong <laughs> in the banking industry and lots of regulatory issues were coming out. So if you're, if you're joining us here live, tell me how many pages do you think the dot Frank act had just take a wild guess. And let's just say it was a lot of pages. I'll, I'll re reveal the information in just a minute. It was a very lengthy document and it required uh, everyone in banks to really consume the information, check if the regu regulation applies to their size and type of organization, check all of their policies and procedures, um, get an understanding of how this applies to them, what policies and procedures need to be written or updated or revised or, or deleted. And that was a massive project. So it was great for the consulting business because all the banks were like, hey, we need help. We need people to read this thing and understand this thing. And if you know banks, they don't really share information that well. So if, if one bank figured it out, they're not going to tell their buddy bank, hey, you can actually do this. You know, here's the applicability spreadsheet that you can use. So everyone was wasting so much time uh, working on this. And OK, I see I see a guest came in of 100. It was 2,300 pages, depending on how you format it, but you can, you can Google this. That's, that's a lot of pages. I don't think I can read 2,300 pages, just sitting down and reading through regulations and trying to find applicability. So I see this as a huge growth area in financial services where you can now upload the, the data into uh, chat GPT four, for example, and you can ask like, Hey, so what are the main requirements for a company that has you know, X number of employees and this much revenue because there are applicability laws and also follow up with, can you write a policy that addresses this and procedures? And can you target specific uh, types of people in my company and target the procedures for those specific types of people? And it will do it for you. And it won't take that long. So I think my mind is just blown. Like years ago, this would have been amazing. Nice, nice. Proz, what are your thoughts? Biggest value add and growth opportunity for finance and data professionals? Yeah, so I mean, just uh, capitalizing on what Kate said and what, you know, Vin described as well, uh, there's obviously quite a bit that they can get in a tactical level. Uh, obviously, it's things like uh, accessing better data, uh, consuming that data, making meaningful uh, you know, decisions on that data with the assistance of AI. But I think if you just take a step back to get to that point, I think it provides now, especially for finance individuals, an excuse and a valid reason for effective finance transformation. You can't just jump to AI. You can't just move on to you know having a large language model and start working on it right away. You have to go through various steps. And I think this creates a process whereby you analyze the data available to you, all the data you might be able to consume, how that data applies to you as a business and what you can deliver to a business constituents. And I think more than that, what this allows for you as a finance department to do is drive finance transformation and now allows you to change your processes. I think, you know, often in finance, we talk about and we see finance departments that are very 
reactive in the sense that they work in a scheduled basis, their plans are done at this time, their forecasts are done at this time. And while these schedules are harnessed and in place, things are happening all around them and they're not being proactive, rather reactive to a schedule. And now I think once they exercise finance transformation and really data transformation for finance and move ahead with this, it allows them to change their overall processes and I think be a lot more proactive in terms of how they add value to their business as well as their shareholders slash stakeholders. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I, I love everybody's comment on this, man. And for me, like, you know, having 20 plus years in accounting, finance, FP&A and financial leadership, when I always think about tools, right? We're always late to the party. All my CFOs out there, all my finance accounting professionals, we're always late to the game, man. Like sales comes in, they got their, you know, sales and marketing have really, really catapulted GPT-4 and these generative, these large language models and generative AI. And now when I think about finance, right, the biggest value add that we have, and I've seen countless use cases that we've had with clients that we work with here at Fresh fp &A, but also just some good friends of mine. And I'll share a great example of it. Um, I had a good friend of mine. He's an audit manager at a uh, mid-sized audit firm, right? I was meeting with him. We were catching up and he's talking about leased accounting, right? ASC, ASC 842. And I'm sitting here, I'm about to doze off then, right? Pros, he's talking 842. And I'm like, I'm like tilting my head back trying to stay, right? And he's telling me about all this time, energy, and effort that he spent writing this eight page memo. Because to what Kate's point was, when you look at this accounting pronouncement, it's like, it's like a whole nother language and it's long. And, you know, unless you're geeking out and reading that when you're like having your off time, nobody's going to read the entire statement. Right. So he's telling me about this and I'm seeing his pain. Right. And this is an audit manager giving this memo to a client. So it's value add. Right. And I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, man, how much other articles or documents are out there? So I was like, hey, man, pull open your phone real quick. We're going to summarize 842 for a manufacturing company and we're going to summarize it in two pages that you can copy and paste to a PDF document and get that over to them. And we actually did it. So we worked through the prompts. I, I was coaching him through it. It got him to what I said, think is the golden effort for finance. It got him to the, to the, to the end zone, right? It got to him to that time to score. And when we got done with it, he got the two pages and I actually had it on there and I was like, bro, what's your email? And I sent it to him on my phone and I was like, now we can get back to talking about college, the college football playoffs. Now we can actually talk about something fun. But the whole crystallization of that story was this is an audit. This is his life, right? This is what he does. And, and, and it gave sources for it. It gave, he says, Chris, this could have saved me hours amount of time, right? Because I could have spent more time focused on like customizing this wide variety of information to actually specifically my client, right? And for those finance professionals, that is the biggest use case. When you can start thinking in prompts, when you can start thinking about how to leverage the resources that are already there to get you to a point to now you're customizing it and configuring it to that unique situation, that's one of the biggest value adds. So it kind of echoes what everybody was mentioning, but that's a huge opportunity for finance and data professionals. 